Um, yep, so uh, I'm Hannah. Um, I started my fellowship as a, a mathematical modeler. Um, I've sort of finished my project uh, as a, a research software engineer. So that's been quite a, an exciting journey on its own. Um, but this was actually quite a timely uh, point to sort of review my fellowship because it, it, it sort of ended up being a fairly concise piece of work. Um, and my sort of contribution has, to it has ended. So um, I spent two weeks in Disney over the summer. So I've used uh, Disney films to, to, to guide us through my, my fellowship journey. Um, so to start off, uh, the, the rookie. So this is how I felt when I came along to RSE events and, and heard people talk about software stuff. I thought I didn't know anything. Um, and to be honest, I still feel like that sometimes, but there we go. Um, but I guess that the main motivation for wanting to apply to, to SSI fellowship was um, driven by the COVID response um, and sort of wow. my lack of um, ability and insecurity in what I was doing. And I wanted to make sure that everything I was doing was following good practice with, you know, with, with the impacts of that. You can sort of can guess if, if we did bad code, what would happen? It wasn't good. Um, so I thought, I, you know, I can't be the only one feeling like that in, in our organization. Um, and I was also aware that there were lots of other people doing lots of other good stuff, but everything was quite siloed. So some idea of bringing everyone together to share good practice to sort of make sure that we were doing the best we could. So I put together a, a fellowship plan, which sort of looked like this. Um, mainly focused around establishing some sort of network where we could do the odd event, uh, maybe with some external speakers, do a bit of knowledge share, um, and possibly look at doing some sort of hackathony event around some of the COVID-19 code that code base that we, we produced to make sure that it was robust, reproducible for other points in time where where it could be useful for other, you know, outbreaks and stuff. So um where I was working at the time was UK Health Security Agency, so very much at the forefront of the COVID uh, response there. Um, they were, you know, make it, taking advantage of, of personal development options um, and engaging with other fellows um, and also sharing experience from, gov from government agency. I think the, all, all, well, all of the talks today have, have been from non-academic institutes and, and at the time I felt very much like an, an exception, which I think the others have, have alluded to as well, but I think we're, we're rapidly seeing that that's maybe not so the case. So the actual journey, um, it actually took a long time to get anything started, partly because we were still going through a, a response um, and also organisational mergers and changes, uh, which made finding infrastructure and, and people a little bit more difficult. Um, actually, a lot of the effort, maybe six months of 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 my time not full time but six months of my fellowship I just spent calling people up finding out who to talk to trying to persuade people that doing things was a good idea and you know make, making sure that we were doing things correctly so that we didn't start something and then someone sort of shut it down because we weren't following policies or anything um which included a lot of a lot of working out what what infrastructure and and uh, communication channels we actually had available. Um, I, we actually ended up setting a up a software community of practice, um, which was able to connect people from all across the agency. So uh, by the end of the year of the first year, we had representation from every different group, which is sort of the highest subdivision um, of, of UKHSA. Uh, we had representation from every, every group there, which was actually really good considering some of those groups were sort of HR and finance as well. Um, we did a bunch of events, way more than, than I anticipated, including a monthly seminar series, a monthly coffee and coding session, um, a hackathon, which was the first one and has, has now become a, an annual occurrence. They've just had their second one, which I've been told has gone very well, um, and a sort of a half day code review workshop. Um, Alongside sort of internal networking, uh, we were able to link in with the um, sort of professions. So there, I, I'm not sure how that translates to other industries and, and academics, but um, in government, you sort of have representatives who, you know, sort of 
take charge of different professions so there's science there's analytics um data science and so on um, so by linking in with with those people, we were able to make sure that what the software community was delivering was sort of in line with strategies and, and other things going on so that we were sort of making ourselves sort of, I don't know, you can't dispose of us very easily because we're helping fulfill these strategies, um, as well as joining up uh, with, with a lot of the, the activities in, in the RSC community. Um, and yeah, sort of just general support. So with the with the email inbox, we were able to actually link people up with other teams and help people just do their work, um, which was actually really really nice. Sounds a bit cheesy to say, but it was really nice to be able to do to to get someone from a team who maybe they were the only coder, they weren't able to do code reviews within the team or ask the questions. They would ping us an email, and we'd be able to either help them ourselves, so our little our little management team or we would be able to connect them with someone else. So um, a little bit of extra stuff that, that I got from the fellowship that wasn't really in the plan. Um, loads of opportunities uh, to, to speak with fellows, to engage in, uh, in, in events, um, a lot more personal development that, than I ever imagined. Um, and networks, again, just meeting lots of amazing people and being able to contribute to initiatives and strategies that. I wasn't even aware of when I started. Um, so where has it gone from sort of when I finished with the with the community? Um, when I handed over, um, I split the role that I was doing as sort of community oversight into um, sort of eight, eight people's roles. Um, some of the people took on multiple uh, aspects that are shown here. Um, but by splitting it up, I'm hoping that that's able to give people a bit more time because it, the community was being managed voluntarily. Um, so sort of add on to to people's jobs. So hopefully by splitting the roles up, making them a bit, a bit more defined, it not only enables the community to continue, but hopefully to grow as well, because there were lots of ideas that we had, which we just didn't have capacity to. Um, so that's that's the slide. There's probably too many to talk about. Um, I guess the thing that I'm most disappointed about is is the impact assessment. Um, that was something that I probably thought about too late, and I wish I'd been able to do more. Um, I guess the the one nice thing was that we did get um, a shout out in the staff the annual staff survey in helping to contribute to um, an in, increased satisfaction in learning and, and development offerings. Um, so. Uh, a few confessions and, and sort of reflections in the sort of true SSI style of, 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 of confessions. Um, it was great fun. And this community and the wider RSE community is just amazing. Um, things which were a bit difficult, uh, gaining momentum, spending money, it forces you to, to take note of where you're not very good and, and actually do something about it. Um, and the, I think the biggest one, which the SSI has been really good at sort of promoting, is, is this assuming good intentions. It's so easy to, to read an email and the number of emails I've read and gone off and had a cry and a cuddle with a dog and then sort of reflected and thought, no, they probably didn't mean it like that, did they? Um, and then some actual confessions. I made a mess of some uh, collaborative documents. Very, very bad mess of one of them. Um, and turning up to deliver training without knowing the material is also not a good idea. I can go into details another time if people want those. Um, so the review of the fellowship, I wasn't sure what to score myself. Um, there were two aspects of, of my original plan that I wasn't able to meet um, in terms of like sort of reviewing our, our COVID code. But I think that what the community actually um, did was far greater than that and it actually means that people are in a better position going forward to you know make, make their code better um they're more aware of, of of better practices and i wasn't able to spend all of my money because everything was online and so no one wanted any money for anything which is good um uh an absolute item that didn't make it onto the the original time plan because it wasn't on the original schedule was getting a dog um, I cannot recommend that enough, and especially one who is willing to model the SSI t-shirt as 
as shown here. So this is Misty and she's amazing. Um, so uh, this is the uh, acknowledgement slide. Um, I'd particularly like to say a huge thank you to people who have been role models. I think that's something that's been really, really key, in particular Rachel um, and the community building Zoom call. If you haven't like come across that, I can't recommend it enough. It's such a good place to go and get feedback and, and sort of float ideas around. Um, and then final slide, these are all of the dogs, I mean, Lots of them are of Misty, but all of the dogs that have been in a room, either my room or the person on the other end of the the, the uh, video call that I've been talking to, who've, you know, been around while I've been talking about fellowship stuff. There we go. I'm done. Fantastic. Thanks, Hannah. Do you have any questions for Hannah? Mario? So you're very... Um, auditory of dogs. Can you comment on cats? I've had two cats come to stay, but they weren't during my fellowship, so yeah. they didn't make it onto the slide. And I'm no, sorry, because no. I know that a, a few people on the call have them. Oh, the people always have invasive cats. You can, you know, you're sitting on the Zoom call and then the cat will suddenly take the prime position. Uh, so I was just wondering whether... Because cats figure in quite a lot of people's lives, so I, I just and I I hope I wasn't one of the people that stressed you out in the in the SSI. I, I didn't ever go that that. But... So Matthew's got a question, so probably more sensible than me. And we have a cat, Max, I believe, Sarah's cat. Yay! Hard to follow that up, but. Um... Yeah, specifically on, um, quite interested to hear that you sort of had a um, a plan for yourself stepping away from this and, and handing it off to other people. Um, how did you convince others that this was a worthwhile thing to take on? I, I guess splitting it up into separate things is probably a good idea because then it's not such a, a, you know, responsibility or burden, but like what what other you know, tactics to, to use, because I, I find it can sometimes be a bit difficult to get other people sort of excited, engaged and willing to do some of these things. Um, quite a bit of sweet talking. Um, and actually, most of the people that um, sort of ended up being on sort of what, what's now the steering committee uh, were people that had already volunteered to actually lead something. So they were sort of already sat there and waiting. Um, but also, I think actually having seen the impact or attended events, um, people were really willing to to help. Um, and what we've also, or what I advised, sort of based on some of the um, community call advice, was that we put a, a little clause in in the expectations that we only really wanted people to volunteer if if they were volunteering, they should only commit for a year. As in, we wanted the them to commit for a year if they could so that they weren't sort of expected to carry on until someone else stepped up 